Welcome to Coffee with Joe for Thursday, June 10th, 2010. Joe, I'd Thanks. like to talk a little bit about one of your foundational thinkers and writers on monetary reform, a man named Frederick Soddy. Um, Frederick Soddy was, uh, won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1921. He, he was a foundational thinker in uh, the development of uh, nuclear power. Right. Um, but uh, then my understanding is he became disillusioned that uh, the uh, knowledge that he was gaining was being used to create a war machine and uh, turned his efforts away from chemistry to studying the science of economics. Joe, tell us what, what were his contributions to the thinking on economics and money systems? Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, add one other thing, Pete, if I can, to his uh, to his uh, resume. He's the originator of social sciences, Pete. That is to say, the concept that there's a morality, you know, to, to the decisions that are made with regard to science, and so there's a consequence, and so you know, scientists have to be taken into account, you know, more when they, you know. Uh, are doing things as to what the consequences of doing them are. So well, he's also, besides the creator of nuclear fission, and he's also the father of social science, you know, as a as a uh, field of study. Um, yeah, and his in his disillusionment, uh, you know, he a part of it was, well, for all the scientific benefit that we're creating, for all the knowledge base that we're creating, you know, the ability, the technology to to have plenty, and yet we don't have plenty, you know. Uh, you know, even even during those early times in the 20s, Pete, you know, we were going through some, you know, uh, severe, you know, booms and busts, Pete, okay? Um, and he was trying to say, you know, well, you know, why is that, you know, since we, we have the means of productions, we have the people, we have the resources, why aren't we doing it? And, uh, and, and, in, and in that manner, he tried to apply, his effort was to apply scientific rigor, scientific method, to the study of economics and and foundationally the study of the money system okay the monetary systems and it was in doing that you know that he kind of came to the conclusion that it's the fiction that he called of the monetary science the part of economics that's the cause of so much of the problem and that that fiction you know manifests itself in us believing that uh... <laughs> First of all, that the boom and bust cycles are, are necessary, you know, necessary to the degree that they are, um, you know, but that, you know, further, you know, how, how that prevents us from enjoying the prosperity that ought to be available when you have, you know, healthy, intelligent, educated people with a great means of physical production and natural resources from enjoying that prosperity. So what did he find? He found that what, the way what people... What was the fiction? You know, the, the, the fiction, you know, the fiction was, was really more than anything, Pete. It was the fiction of what wealth is and what, and what, is, uh, and what is what we call wealth. You know, we, 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 we misdefine wealth as being, you know, those dead instruments that somebody's got in the back of their vault, you know, and they call that wealth when the real wealth is, you know, whatever was produced by the labor... Uh, you know, for which that those dead instruments were created. That's the real wealth. That's what we enjoy. We enjoy the fruits of our labor. We don't enjoy the fruits of our wealth, <coughs> of our uh, of our debts. Excuse me. Um, so, so he said, you know, in order to do away with that fiction, you know, we have to get control of the money system so that it represents, uh, you know, the benefits of labor, and applying by applying that, you know, he kind of. That's where his thing about energy economics, Pete, okay, is uh, basically really, in my opinion, like the originator of this, you know, the concept of ecological economics. That is to say that there is a relationship between the amount of energy that we put into uh, our well-being to, to actually measuring our well-being. So he was such a, a classic, you know, scientist uh, – you know, he's sometimes referred to as a revolutionary scientist, Pete, okay? Not, not, again, for the things that he's recognized for, but really for this part of his work, the part related to, 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 money, to the money system. Um, so that's kind of the background, Pete. That's, that's kind of, you know, where, you know, how he got there, okay? Uh, his own personal intellectual, you know, you know, 
ship and 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 the findings that he made and he wrote a number of you know he wrote a number of books he built on the he built on the scientific works of uh arthur kitson sir arthur kitson um british guy uh and uh and uh then he wrote himself you know several books uh notably uh wealth virtual wealth and debt and that's where basically pete basically he says if we rely on debt if we think we're going to rely on debt to make our money, okay, we are never going to have the wealth because it's going to be a, a continual robbing of the people from their labor that they put into it by the manipulation of debt instruments, and that defines right there where we are today, Pete. Joe, we'd like to make our uh, listeners, our viewers, aware of a website that features Frederick Soddy, and this is a gentleman named Arian Nevin's website. And it's uh, nationaleconomy.net is the name of the website. And he uh, wrote a book a couple of years ago that I've got right here, National Economy, The Way to Abundance, uh, that yeah. you can get yeah. on his website. It's not a very, uh, it's not a very long book, but it um, updates uh, the insights of Frederick Soddy. It's largely based on Soddy's work. And there's a paragraph here where he describes this uh, difference of opinion about how wealth is defined. Do you mind if I read it to you? No, sure. In national economy, wealth refers solely to positive physical quantities and not to money, debt, or legal property. Wealth does not include human labor or diligence, money, or debt. Based on this definition, the existence of wealth is not dependent upon human desires, demands, and possession of it. Diamonds in the earth have ju are just as much wealth as a house. All of our natural resources are wealth, regardless of whether they have been harvested or extracted. Wealth does not need to be usefully used. Um, one example that he gives is like the current economy that considers money and debt and you know numbers on pieces of paper are, as wealth, but does not consider the air that we breathe as wealth. Exactly. So when we pollute the air, there's no real cost accounting for it. it exactly. The cost is external, externalized. Exactly. Another place he defines wealth as anything that um, supports or encourages um, human life. Um, right. So obviously the air and the natural resources would have to be included in that. So I see a basis for uh, an ecological economics in the, uh, the writing of Mr. Nevin, and, which is based on Frederick Soddy's work. Right, exactly, Pete. Exactly. Um, you know, there's uh, there's uh, there's that kind of movement out there that says, you know, we we should do away with money and get into resource economics, resource based economics. And I say that's fine as a you know as a goal, you know, uh, but a transition through what, you know? And to me, it has to be a transition through exactly you know that concept that you just described, which is really ecological economics, which is to recognize, you know. Uh, I think it's, uh, you know, one of the Kennedy's calls, you know, the commons, you know, to recognize the commons, which is why I use the term the money system commons, Pete, okay, because the money system has to function as if it was part of the commons. If it does, it'll be become a distributive mechanism for the wealth, you know, that we all create, and we can get away from the foolishness of, of thinking that, you know, what's really important right now in the world, Pete, is all that debt. You know, that's, it's like when you think about it, the whole world is getting ready to come crashing down because of a bunch of pieces of paper that exist in somebody's vault somewhere. And we're going to put people out of work. We're going to have, well, we're going to have social unrest minimally. Are we going to have wars, you know, possibly, you know, and all that stuff for what? Because we don't understand what wealth is, because we don't understand, you know, how the world works. And the money system has to be part of our understanding. Our understanding of the money system has to be part of our understanding of how the world works in a very general sense, or it's or we fail, or we fail. And I always say, P, that our role here as gatekeepers, you know, is to see that the type of information, the type of knowledge, if you will, okay, that Frederick Soddy had as a one of kind of the pivotal people in terms of understanding, you know, that relationship in economics is out there. So, you know, say to anybody listening to this video, look into Frederick Soddy, look into, you know, his concepts of wealth and debt, look into his, what the role of money is in society and, you know, we'll be on our way to solving the problems that we have, Pete.
and the National Economy website would be a good place to start that. Today. Absolutely, absolutely. Very good place, Pete. Joe, that's about it for time for today. We'll see you next okay. week. Okay.